Okay, we're going to start by talking about the exercises about morphology trees in 4.2. So I did a couple of these in class, but I just wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with exactly um, what we were doing with each word. Okay, we did govern mentally in class, but I also want to work with the word unhelpful. Okay, so the first question whenever we address a task like this is to ask ourselves, what is the part of speech for unhelpful? And so the part of speech for unhelpful is an adjective that belongs to that particular category. Now, when we ask ourselves, okay, well, we have an adjective, we have to figure out what is the adjective um, ending that can be added. And so our two candidates here are un and full, right? And so if full is applied to the word help, then it would have been applied to the word help with help being either a noun or a verb. Right? So in other words, it would have changed the part of speech for the word help. Now, the prefix un couldn't have been added either to a noun or to a verb. We can't unhelp someone, um, and we can't give someone unhelp. So that leads us to the conclusion that the adjective prefix un was the last prefix added to the existing adjective form helpful, which was made with an adjective suffix added on to whatever part of speech help had been to begin with. All right, so that's one of them. So you can see that we have a derivation where we've added a prefix. Now, the next example that I wanted to do is depoliticize. Ah, sorry. Depoliticize. And this one is a little bit similar, right? The prefix D can only go on to the beginning of another verb, right? So somehow politicize must have come together previously into a verb form. We know that that's been the case because this I-Z-E prefix takes a um, an adjective, in this case, politic, and transforms it into a verb. Now you'll notice that I put the branch, the left side branch, over um, P-O-L-I. And that's because the word politic is based upon the word for city, polis. And so this is a noun. So the word politic, which is an adjective, is based on the noun form polis. All right, I also did retroviral in 
class, so we're going to do the, for, the word conversationally. Now in class today we talked about back formation, which is the misapplication of a syllable boundary or the confusion of a syllable boundary with a derivational affix ending. And this becomes important with the word conversation and words that are um, based on it. So with any word we have to ask ourselves first, what is the part of speech? Conversationally is an adverb. Okay, which is made with an adverb suffix. And so that is added on to an adjective. Okay, so the adjective is made by means of adding this al adjective suffix to a noun. And the noun is conversation. Now this is where a lot of speakers begin to indulge in back formation. The inflectional ending that transforms the verb into a noun is not ION, but ATION. Okay. So the entire word is based on a verb converse, which is the base form. Now, many people have begun to, to coin a new word, a new verb, on the basis of this back formation, and have begun to talk about conversating. Now, this back formation hasn't been accepted in standard edited American English varieties in the same way that other back formation forms like burgle or burglar have been. But who knows what will happen. Right. Um, I'm not going to do unlovable because that is um, parallel to unhelpful. But I am going to do the word geekiness. Um, just because that seems to be particularly appropriate for such an example um, as an online whiteboard being transformed into a presentation. So when we look at the word geekiness, we can see this as a noun. So this noun, ness, this noun suffix, ness, um, which is actually one of the oldest suffixes in the English language because it existed in uh, Old English with the exact same meaning of taking an adjective and turning it into a um, an abstract noun. This adjective is produced by means of adding a Y ending, which is an adjectival suffix onto a noun. Okay, so I hope that these trees help um, in the way that you're understanding morphology trees.